Hey guys, so we have got uh, the one and only David Cross, an old buddy today. Um, mm -hmm. Dave, uh, you know half of Mr. Show with Bob Odenkirk, another extremely gifted comedian. Those guys, yeah. those sketches were so interesting, so funny, mm -hmm. along with Arrested Development. We talk about the uh, specials he's doing. He's got one coming out. Uh, uh, Dana, you had uh, some good chats with him. Well, I, I had listened to his album once, I think, and I asked, I couldn't remember the title. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. And I think it was Shut Up, You Stupid Fucking Baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like 2002. But he's kind of like with, and Bob Odenkirk, they're like Batman and Robin. Or I don't know which one's Robin, which yeah. one's Batman, but they have an amazing sensibility. We talk all about their friendship. And um, Dave is just one of those uh, comedians that is always goes outside the lines does whatever he, he i mean he's mm. he you, he's um very thoughtful about what he likes in comedy and and he and bob and that's why mr show was so great and different. we even make him talk about uh the chipmunks movie especially the second one the squeakquel dana thought i was making up the squeakquel <laughs> <laughs> Which we brought, we bring up his the, the the trilogy of the chipmunk movies that he was in, and uh, I thought Dave was kidding the second one, but it was called the 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 chick wool. What was the it? The squeak wool. Yeah. So they squeak. Uh, yeah. So we laugh, and you'll get to <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll get to know David David Cross, the one and only David Cross. And I like him because he's on Just Shoot Me, and he did one of our best episodes ever, which was Slow Donnie. And yeah. uh, so fun. So we get to talk about that. Okay, well, here you guys go. On a platter. David Cross. Should we call him David Cross? Or yeah. David? Because I'm going to... How about DC? Just yeah. DC. That should, that should fit. Well, that's you know. my initials. Now it's... That, that's why oh, I said it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's the joke. There's two DCs, two Davids. Do we, have, do we have a third? <laughs> What's your Just middle name, Dave? Spade. He's calling me Spader. I'll call Spade <laughs> Sparky. Sparky, for just today's podcast, I'll call Spade Sparky. Do you no, mind I'm that? I'm just going to jump in. <laughs> I'm looking at your whole everything to see where to jump in. I could easily jump in with my right, e. It's good, to, it's, it's good to know that you guys have really done your Look at that. Work. Look at Dana. There's, <laughs> there's too much stuff. There's too uh, much. I, I don't know where to begin. It's fucking it's, spades uh, over there. I'm Googling. All right. Let's see what we got I here. Actually, you I were... actually do my stuff. <laughs> right before they go, you'll know them when you see them. And I go, okay. <laughs> so uh, we, Dana, you don't know about this. I did a sitcom mm -hmm. in the old days called Just Shoot Me. I and was a guest. You were a guest. Oh, I and, can't say the next thing then. And DC was. <laughs> I was going to say DC was probably our favorite episode. But Dana, you were second. You were so close to ah. second. I can't uh, do comedy acting like that, David. <laughs> David no, he, Cross. He, he's a brilliant at that stuff. I put a wig on me. I'll do a voice. David, do you remember this bit we did on Just Shoot Me? I uh, it it was perplexing to me how to this day that that uh, slow Donnie thing was as popular as it was. I mean, I I this what are we was that thirty years ago? Twenty five years easy, ago, something like yeah. that. And um, <laughs> and. I mean, I still get people still to this day saying uh, chicken pot pie or, <laughs> or green, green quarter. quarter. Yeah. yeah, green quarter I get. <laughs> um, Dana, so. just so you know, we were, uh, he was on as Slow Donnie, mm -hmm. and I think you were Elliot's fun brother. Of, uh, making fun of Todd's. Yeah. It was, a, you know, it was a all funny stuff back in the 90s. You made fun of Todd's. Yeah, he was a challenged individual. Oh. oh. And uh, he was one of the cast members' brothers, and then he wanted to date Laura. <laughs> and he was hitting on her, and she didn't know what to do because I don't know why he was mentally challenged. And did you use a Boston accent for no. that? Oh, okay, because no, that was not. pretty funny when you just did no, it. That. <laughs> I, uh, it's the only way you're allowed to say the word retarded in context is to do it like you're doing an impression of, a Boston guy, because <laughs> it's so That's normal the, up there. Yeah, and, it just um, it doesn't sound aggressive. It's just I thought you were talking about. That's just, talks, nah, that's just like, how they talk, you know. Yeah. Um. But uh, uh, the guy, the character was pretending 
to be mentally challenged be because he was getting a free ride. Yeah. And then he showed him his the real self to Laura's character and then, you know, gas litter the rest of the show. <laughs> and what did what how did you, did you affect kind of a voice or a character or you play it like yourself? Oh, did, n- I mean, I don't know. It was, it's a, uh, you know, sitcom <laughs> for a network. So I just did it as broad and dumb as yeah. you know, it's just like you know, Donnie wants to do this. Or what I can't remember, but it's something like that. <laughs> it's only thirty uh, years. Come on. <laughs> I remember when when he's with, he's just screwing up his household his whole life. He's getting taken care of his whole life, and his mom's all beat up. And she and he goes, "I love you, mommy." And she goes, "See, that makes it all worth it." Then he goes, "I love you, table." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the table. And she goes, "Well." <laughs> but with Laura, he's hitting on her and he's like, and then when they get quiet, he goes, listen, baby, I think we, I know a great sushi place. We can get out of here. And she's like, wait, what? Yeah. Wait, can you talk normal? And he's like, no, I'm Donnie. <laughs> and then he accuses Laura. <laughs> it's all great. Well, the great thing about that, the sitcom world is that you would be sharing all these experiences with a coworker that you're extremely close with and yet never know. <laughs> Until that episode, and that was never brought up again, that he had a brother <laughs> that was <laughs> mentally disabled. And then never and brought then, up in any other never episode. Never brought up again. <laughs> I'm like, I should, every show I should have gone, where's that fucking scammer <laughs> slowed on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't bring him. <laughs> yeah, he was funny. And, and Maya, Laura was Maya. And uh, God, we laughed. We talked about that forever. We always, everyone's like, that's the one that was... But anyway, good job, David Cross, on that. Thank you All for right. that. Okay, we're pretty pretty much got, did that Wrapping one. That's it a up, good one. We, we uh, wrap up. It's a perennial wrap up. We're always on the edge of wrapping up. <laughs> but uh, do you want to talk about your current stuff or your canon of work? Oh, I don't care. Um, uh, I mean, there's not. I I know. I mean, if we're talking about stuff to promote. I do. I have a special that I shot last summer during that tour that, that I think is February. It's in mid February. I should know this, uh, when it's coming out on, is that world's worst? Yeah. The worst daddy in the world. Worst daddy in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not okay. So that's you, when you shoot that, like that special, did you, partner with a corporation or do you do it yourself or what was it is it like louis ck kind of thing or what yeah where did I, you... I i did the last one before that uh myself i just you know uh produced the you know out of pocket with some good local folks shot it in new york that that was i did that at because of covid um because mm. i was going to go on tour but i had to cancel it and uh and i figured i'll just shoot this anyway it's all it's fairly topical and relevant so Um, when it came time to do this, uh, I paired up with 800 pound gorilla out of Nashville. They're great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just, yeah, shot it, uh, in the middle of the tour in Chicago and, and, uh, they were great. I'm pretty, pretty psyched about it. It's good. It was a very fun tour and, uh, and yeah, I did it all myself. It'll be out. I'll distribute it, you know, with them and that's it. So can I ask you a question? Cause I think the last one I did, it was with a corporation. And anyway, I think they said it was like something like four to $500,000 to shoot the special mm-hmm. for the, for the two nights. Right. Is there a way when you're doing it yourself to bring that price point down a little bit? I mean, it I, seems exorbitant. I'm not anti-union. I'm just saying yeah. that, no, absolutely. I had seven, 17 cameras were on me. I think yeah. it's like crazy. Yeah. I mean, um, Absolutely. It's, uh, I did this one. This was even less expensive than the one that I did myself where I was, um, kind of scrambling a little bit. And, uh, and that's part of what small part, but a significant part of what made 800 pound gorilla. So great to work with, but it's, you know, and everything's in house. So I didn't have to get a separate editor and go find one and mm-hmm. everything, you know, when you're communicating with them through the pre and the, actual production and mm-hmm. post-production it's all in-house it's all one place and it's just a lot easier and they're all good at what they do so and it was it was relatively cheap and it seems like my 
impression with you is you wouldn't be someone who would get nervous, but do you get nervous either shooting specials, going on talk shows? Are you, because you do seem pretty mm -hmm. calm or at least together. Confident. <laughs> I don't like shooting specials because usually it's here you go. It's your one shot. You worked on it for a year. Better make it work. You know. Well, uh, I think that's. I I don't get nervous. I definitely am aware of stuff and everything's kind of heightened a little bit. But I I always shoot always in the middle of a tour. So if I'm doing, let's say, eighty dates, right, in a hmm. calendar half mm -hmm. year, whatever it is, and I always look at the calendar and the routing and stuff, I go, okay, I'm going to shoot my special right around there. Somewhere, give or take a few shows around show 40. Mm -hmm. Then I always record the audio during the last or second to last show because um, it changes, it evolves as you go mm -hmm. on. And by the time I've shot it, it's, you know, I mean, that's my 41st time I've done that set. And uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I've got it, it's down. And, and I always, you know, I'll tape two episodes so it's if sure. i fuck something up i got one more do you do take, retakes you know, more, during uh, your special mm -hmm. i know uh there's a no, comic i know no. i work with a lot and sh and they stop and they redo their line a bunch of times when even though they have two shows so that's one no. way that i have not heard of but i mean I, I, it would mess with the momentum for me um oh but, for sure yeah unless you totally mangle it i mean i don't think i'll do it no i'm not doing it for uh, the TV audience or the audience at home, when I'm doing that, I'm always, it's always about the people in that room. And hopefully that translates. And if I fuck up, I'll say I fucked up and yeah. whatever and, and address it. Uh, but I'm very much in the moment. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm not trying to cut it so much so that it looks, I want it to look as spontaneous as it, feels when you're in the audience you know sure do you think that when you do it in the middle which i think i'm trying to figure this out for myself because i sort of got off caught off guard my first special was probably you know way back around just shoot me and uh and then it was on hbo so it kind of people were traveling with an hour for 10 years you know that was just mm -hmm. the old way it was done and then when i thought about doing another one. I did it for Comedy Central. And I don't think as many people saw it as right before Netflix was blowing up. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like, God, I, that, all that material, and then you have to get rid of it, I guess. And then after my last special, they're like, now once it aired, the next, con you know, next stand-up I'm doing at a theater, they're like, well, ideally it would be all new. And I'm like, all new? A whole new hour? <laughs> it took me so long to get this one. So I'm, what, what I'm sort of getting at is you do it in the middle. Mm-hmm. Which might be smart because by toward the end you, you have free reign to sort of start screwing with it because you already got it. Mm -hmm. Then you can then by the end you might have, you know, another twenty half hour. You don't know. You know, it might evolve. Well, into that's something. Ex yeah. that's exactly what happens. And uh, the the what I do and I've done for the last uh, four specials. This will be my fifth time doing this thing, doing it this way. Is and I'm, I just started a couple weeks ago. Uh, I do these shows in Brooklyn where I live um, and I do it's uh, they're called shooting the shit, seeing what sticks. Everybody knows <laughs> what the premise is. I'm going up there with just a handful of notes and mm -hmm. kind of Dana, like what you showed and uh, just scribble, mm -hmm. scroll, you know, and I go, yeah. Oh, what do, what do I want to work on? What do I think is funny? And everybody, and I have guests so that it's, they're not watching a guy for an hour and 15 minutes, just dicking around. But um the beginning of it, I will, you know, have some kind of fresh anecdote, which I do now, uh, currently about, uh, a surprise hand job. And then, uh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then I get, to, then I have a guest and then I get to, and that's a thing like, oh, this just happened, but I think there can be a story here, you know? And then I mm -hmm. get to just kind of some ideas that I'm working on. Uh, and you know, sometimes it's, it hits, sometimes it doesn't. And then I have a guest and then I'll just do stuff that I dropped out of the last special. So every single special or tour that I do has like it, anywhere from like five to 15 minutes of stuff that I did on the last tour 
that I'm not going to put in an hour and a half of material, uh, you know, not doing a special for, I'm not going to make it a 90 minute special, which means I got to cut something because the shows are that sure. long. And then the stuff I cut out of both the audio and the, the video special is stuff where I go, I know I can work on that and make that better. And so I'll work on those bits and try to find a different context for them. And, and there's a, I don't want to give a, give it away, but there's the, the closing bit of this last special, which is really strong and, and, uh, you know, pretty, uh, a pretty good punch. Um, that whole bit was something that I riffed just before I shot the last special before this one where I took it out, I cut it out, and I was like, I, I know I can work on this. And I worked on it and it became the closing bit. So I have that stuff ready to go. So it's, it's like a sourdough starter, you know? You take a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Have you noticed what happened on my last one was I had stuff that was very new that I, you know, I, I always fall in love with newer stuff. Mm, and I sure. threw it in and it was undercooked. And then now... I would work on it. So I'm like, I really can't put it in because the premise is the same one, but now it's five minutes long and way better mm -hmm. and more polished. I'm like, shit, I kind of wasted it. Like you just said, you didn't waste it, which is smart. Well, there is, I mean, yes, but also there's stuff that, um, which is partly why I do the audio at the end, because there are things that were definitely fresher in the middle of the, the thing that I, I, you know, I was like, oh, I, I can, I've, I just started working on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so the audio version is a little different and tighter and uh, even expanded, but it, it, it's more of the idea, like it addresses the idea as opposed to this kind of throwaway funny idea that I did. And then I, I found some, somewhere down the line, I found a context for it. When you say your strongest bit is at the end, the last time I did one, I went in, I won't mention the live streaming. So it wasn't anything negative, but went into a room with all these people and they just talked about audience retention. They mm. showed me posters of the special. He said, this does well in the Netherlands. This does well in Brazil. And then I thought, well, you should do a special as if the audience could start leaving at any minute. Yeah. In other words, you know what I mean? Because that's what happens on, on when the living room, because uh, I... There's certain people I'll go to the end, but you know, I'm a comic, yeah, you know, 15, 16. Oh, yeah. So they really look at that. He made it, you have 18 minutes, 18 minutes of retention by 65% of our audience. I don't know if you think of that or have experienced that. It sounds like something you wouldn't like. No, <laughs> as, I, I mean, as I, an artist, I never think of that and hopefully never will. <laughs> uh, but Good. you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm in it to do fun, good shows. And I don't yeah. care. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not looking to get a $40 million paycheck or, I mean, those days are over obviously, but, um, you know, I'm not, <laughs> that's not my interest. I, I mm -hmm. really, really, really love doing stand up, Uh, and, mm -hmm. and it's just a fun process. Every, every part of it is fun except for traveling. I don't like the travel so much, but, uh, Everything else. Do you know great. any stand up that does no, like the travel? I just did it. And it was rough. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's a G4 rocked and loaded, and they, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, uh, it's, there's, it's, there's some people that have their own bus. I know that. Um, I but, wonder if a bus is good. You know, I did a, I, I've done it in a plane when I jump on with Sandler. It's, but it, it's great, but it still delays. It's still, I mean, it couldn't be better. But you're still like, we're in Florida. It's 85 degrees. Now we're going to Canada. Now we're going to Nova Scotia. Now we're dropping down. And you still manage to complain. I do. I find a way. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, wait, I want to go back. So you, you did Canada and Nova Scotia? Dave, how did you What happens that? is I just talk off the top of my head and it always <laughs> makes no sense. I, That's a weird. Nova route. Scotia, is that still down by Australia? Because I don't have it in front of me. They just moved it. They just moved it a couple <laughs> They pick up and they've ago. been talking about moving yeah. it forever. North yeah. of Scotia. <laughs> it's north yeah. of Scotia. You've been to Scotia, hopefully. No. I, or had it. I go to Canada only because I enjoy the extra taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if we're into the process, just for one more thing yes, I want to ask you. I like, like your comedy, comedy albums. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you feel like when it's recorded on video now, is there anything that changes it at all? Because I'll just say for myself, one night I was driving late night. I got a whole, I don't know, I don't know if it's your first album. It's probably 20 years ago, but it was so brilliant. It was, you had a thing where you thought, maybe I'll get a drink. And next thing you were, you were in your hotel room and people were pounding on the door. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then that's... and then the Ricky Henderson thing that you took so far, like what yeah. album was that? Shut up, you fucking baby. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that's what I thought. Shut up, so, you fucking baby. Yeah. That's going places. Um, I don't know how to describe that. I, I, I'll say it's such a cliche, kind of Monty Python y, but also well, I look back at how you how you made that thing work just verbally. You had to have, you're waking up in a hotel room, you don't know anything, you're stacking words together. Was that, I mean, those albums seem very free. I don't know. Oh, for, especially they, free. For sure. And I was, I was drinking way more during those. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, oh, good. Shows, so yeah. it 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 feels like that. I mean, it's messy. The 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 it's definitely but it's, messier. I like, but it's, like it's, that. it's 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 like crackling though. I love it. It. It, was, it was yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was uh, I put that out on Sub Pop. That was my first comedy album. Yeah, and uh, and that was a real story. That was the uh, I, I I believe I was in Kansas City. Where there were, the guy's knocking and saying, answer your telephone. But it was yeah. pitch black, <laughs> pitch black in the room. I'd been traveling. I didn't, you know, and when you're on the road, you don't know where you are. You wake yeah. up and you have no fucking clue. And I had been out drinking heavily mm. the night before. And what do you drink? Sorry, just real fast. What were you drinking? Uh, I'm guessing beer and tequila. Okay. Not together, but just beer. Just want to put that together. Followed by tequila, yeah. followed by beer, followed by tequila, followed by beer. Okay. Uh, and then a slice. And, um, slice. and, and yeah, it was a bizarre, it was just, it was panic. It was like little kid panic. You know, even though you're an adult, there's a few seconds where you want your mommy because you don't, like, nothing is making sense. And, uh, and, and, the, and the trouble. pitch black yeah. and pounding and yelling yeah. out and of the blue. You don't know where you are and you can't see anything. And there's just mm -hmm. a, a disembodied voice saying, Answer your telephone. Knock, knock, knock. Answer your telephone. Huh? I like they're <laughs> right there and they're telling you to answer your weird. phone. Doesn't he make so But weird. you don't know where you are. Yeah. Where, what telephone? Who? Who Who's are you? Who's talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's are you going? an angel? Are you Angel Moroni? What's happening? <laughs> answer your telephone. <laughs> it's like a Kubrick moment, basically. It was very bizarre. Anyway, that was like a twenty-minute bit or something, but it was you know I brilliant. I have those old Steve Martin albums, David, and uh, as a kid, mm -hmm. I mean now it's all specials and stuff and video, but it was pretty fun because he had a few screw ups, like even when the sound goes out like that, or he's like more one, mm -hmm. and you just and you're just picturing <laughs> in your head, oh, it's so funny whatever he's doing, and he does a bit, and everyone laughs. I'm like, fuck, what is he doing? But I kind of liked it. That's all I had. So I, it's mm -hmm. it's. But I, I would like that scratchiness and that kind of fun of the old stuff like that. And there's not that many. I think some specials come no, out right. as a as also a CD or an album, but they I don't I, I they'll never get back to the sound of those sixties yeah. albums. I mean it just so was cool. crackling. I think it's one mic hanging overhead in the club. You hear your individual laughs that crackling thing and now it's all stacked and what, remixed there's and, you know. there's one um i don't know which one it is but of the different comedy channels on uh sirius F xm mm -hmm. or whatever um one of them 95 percent of the clips they play uh mostly from people you haven't heard of but they're definitely in a club oh, and they cool. sound different mm -hmm. and i appreciate that you know you hear the people you Such hear a familiar, yeah, right up on you, and, yeah. And, yeah, and it's it's cool when you're going across the dial there, as it were, and uh, you know you've got the Netflix is you know one, and you've got Comedy Central and and the and Raw Dog, whatever that you you're listening to it, and they it just sounds slicker. It's it's you know S that. sometimes money hurts comedy. Put it that way. Oh yeah. You know, just if a guy sure. doesn't have much, can't afford many mics, he's got a, he can only do it in a little club. He's not very popular, but it has a crackle to it. Got a vibe. Rick Rubin in there fixing every mistake. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, you know, you want it a little messy, and that's what I like. I like, I like mistakes 
in a lot of things, and I like them in songs when there's they say something different, and then when the guy sings it in concert, you kind of want that little mess up because you know where the mess up is, and all that stuff is sort of character and gives it something different than super polished, which is the name of my new special, Super Polished. And nice. <laughs> or hey, Neil Young releases whole <laughs> songs that are out of tune. You know? <laughs> See, I like just, it. Hey, we got it. We don't do it again. It's yeah. all going for the feeling sure. of stuff. So you know, it says um, here. I I, I, go ahead, I love that uh, the 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 not a story but like the the when the different actors who work with clint eastwood when he's directing oh yeah we'll do a take and they'll they'll be like (laughs) hey can i get one more like no we got it (laughs) what but i no no we're good we're moving on oh but i yeah (laughs) i just worked with david fincher yeah he worked he said to matt matt damon he was working with matt damon he goes can i do another take and he goes yeah, if you want to waste everybody's fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> One take Eastwood. Oh great. I like these I like these movies where they go, Oh, I did I mean they were this director's so good. We were doing 40 takes. I'm like, maybe he's not that good. I mean, come on. I mean, so 39 yeah, were no. horrible. Like Come on. Yeah. I had I, a guy drop bullets. It was a scene where someone had out of frame, just drop bullets and then they catch it. I'm going to say 60 takes. And I realized he was a child in a sandbox. He could not see the forest for the trees. Just wanted to hit the bullets. Perfect. Anyway, David. I, I wait, Cross. I have another David one. Cross. No, I'll call you your full name now. I had one that had <laughs> rapophobia. We had a, we had a rap party on the last day <laughs> and we only had like two scenes to do so we could have this party. And he kept shooting and everyone's like, Oh my God, he's got rapophobia. He knows it's over now and he won't let it end. That's it. And we went till midnight. Yeah. We canceled the party. We we're like, what are we doing? Wow. Yeah. But okay, it also says says David, you it says here. No, Stephen Wright, it, it says is one of your favorite comics. Now, if that's true, I think he's kind of underrated and uh God, he had a real run there for a second when I was starting out that was so good. And uh I Dana, you probably worked with him, right? Because you were Oh yeah. Oh, he's still out there playing big rooms, I think. Um what is it? Yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I I don't write jokes at all. I'm terrible at it. And when I think of the amount of material a comedian who works like that, you know, I went to a yeah a tw- um, 24 hour uh, convenience store. I went yeah. there; it was closed. He said something about it, not in a row. He's, so lo- he's I locking did it, it up. Yeah, yeah he's like yeah yeah. yeah. Well, hours, we're not 24 hours. <laughs> But the, the, he'll you ruin that one. Well, he job. he's like air, I know I'm horrible. I can't even explain. It's like the movie Airplane, where it's just so much blending. And you know, Stevens like that. And you kind of it's like a magic trick. I really and also the lo-fi to talk that yeah. soft and strut around the Tonight Show only on your material. But you're friends with him, David Cross. <laughs> or um, you just I mean, he's I'm, one of your I favorite comics. Yeah, I haven't seen him in quite a while, but uh, he is. Uh, a key part of key reason why I'm at the place I'm I'm in right now because did did you all know Lauren Dombrowski by any chance? Mm. Uh, Boston comic. She was a mm. producer, head writer for Mad TV for a while, but um, she uh, she was in this comedy group I had in Boston and um, and a good friend and an awesome person. Uh, unfortunately she passed away from cancer a while ago, but she, uh, she was good friends with Steven brought and said, I, there's this guy I think you'd like, um, you should check him out and, uh, brought him to see me do stand up at catch in, uh, in Cambridge. And then he told his manager, uh, of, of, uh, whom I think he only had four clients at the time, maybe three. Um, to come up from New York and see me, uh, Tim Sarkis, um, and and then Tim signed me, and then the rest, as they say, is history. Um, so he's in no small way a, wow a, a have some, big part of that to have some powerhouse I, like that say that about you. It's such a nice legacy yeah, when big. you hear that about someone like, hey, check him out, yeah, help help him out. It's such a, it's it. Yeah, Stephen is a very sweet bu- man. Many times, a few times I've met him, I hung out with him. That doesn't mm. surprise me. Pay it forward. There you go. I, I yeah. mean, it, it's. Uh, I don't know if he's aware of that, um, but 
yeah, it was uh, um, hugely important. Yeah, when I saw mm. him the first time, I it was I was newer, and I had not seen. You know, it's hard to see somebody that kind of comes out of left field because you've seen such similar comedy, and you just go, "Oh my god!" And I had a guy in Arizona that started trying to do Stephen Wright, and it was it was like, "Oh, there's tons of them." And I saw overnight, that, he's I like, mean, "I had a dream." I was a yeah. kite. I woke up in a tree. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not the same. Oh, I'm gonna just write guys. that down. Hold on. A second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at jokes. <laughs> you it, it you see that kind of delivery, and it's often like the oddball. You know, they they affect this kind of oddball persona of like. So here's an interesting idea, <laughs> and it, it, it's just like, no, you're not. You know, you, <laughs> that's not how it works. Yeah. The only one who did it well, it was slightly different, was Mitch Hedberg. I yeah, thought. but M Mitch also, but different. You know, yeah, he he had a uh, uh, joke structure that was similar, but his whole persona. cadence was yeah. and persona kind of uh, southern or some sort of weird twang. But it was kind of real, right? Yeah, and he was always smiling. Mitch Mitch would be smiling, and there'd yeah. be kind of jazz playing behind him sometimes, and. Uh, -huh. uh, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, Stephen Wright was never a junkie. So there's differences. There's, there's differences. Uh, uh, <laughs> they don't have the well, same first name. Um, yeah. Well, I, I have to I, say you know, that when I think of you, David Cross, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I have a compliment <laughs> ready. I was going to go for it. something metaphysical. Uh, <laughs> Well, I just your your career. It seems like you just you you've stuck to your guns. I'm just curious about you've talked about um, the Chipmunk movie, but it seems like you're I you do what you want to do. Uh, have you been tempted at times in your career to do a commercial or something that the money was good, or did you ever get into that trap, that world, or did you regret I, the I, world I, that I, I live don't in? No, but it seems like you just. Seems like your career seems fun because you're always doing exactly what you want to yeah. do the way you want to do it, or you wouldn't do it, which yeah, is pretty much. sometimes I mean, difficult. I, I, That's what I, I, I would not say no to some, um, even if it was another like Chipmunks movie, which I did, not necessarily for the money, but I, at that point when it came around, I hadn't worked for six months, which is, you know what happens internally in your head when yeah. you're like, after like two months, you start going, ah. Oh, like to get some work and yeah. when two becomes three and three becomes four and you're like am i ever going to work again do people hate me what's wrong mm -hmm. four becomes five five becomes six and i jumped it i was like yeah i'll, I'll do whatever yeah, somebody you want. wants like, you gotta... somebody likes you and you're like yeah. shit i want it. i've done, i've been in that position for sure yeah and then and i nobody had any idea that that movie was going to be as phenomenally successful as it was and i was contractually obligated to do two more and the first two were fine i had no issue with it and the third one was just a terrible experience uh, for whatever. I don't know why they. Was it Chipwreck? Like <laughs> it was Chipwreck, yeah. Dana, um, they had me at sorry. the fucking Squeakle. The, the funniest Chip name for a sequel is the Squeakle. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in on that one. Chipwreck, well, look, it's still cute. <laughs> it wasn't Squeakle. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, but I mean, I get to do. And, you know, I kind of supplement. Uh, doing all the stuff that doesn't pay well with a couple of big things. Sure. And then I get, you know, you get these really cool, really cool opportunities, a uh, Spielberg film and a Todd Haynes film and uh, work with Michelle Gondry and all these people. And that doesn't pay shit, yeah. you know, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, worth it's it. all balanced and like uh, t the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret, you know, I mean, yeah. that didn't pay. Uh, Anything. Well, you also and, have respect, uh, and like, I mean, going back to Mr. Show, like with uh, Odenkirk, like Mr. Show yeah. coming off of SNL was just going, oh fuck, they're doing whatever they want. It was, it, it was really. This is a compliment. I was just saying these. Sh it's so bananas, and they do, and they <laughs> they put out so much stuff. It's all clever. I was really, I got I really got into that one. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was, uh, you know. And it was all new. It was new, uh, you know, Bob, neither Bob or I had run a show before. Sure. And it was, and we were, it, HBO was in its infancy, mm -hmm. basically. And they were just like, do whatever the fuck you mm -hmm. want. 
You know, we need you to to get attention. Be yeah, get yeah. We need you to to not be, uh, you know, network TV. We need you to stand out. And uh, here's twenty five dollars. Get back to us at the end of the year. <laughs> see what you can do with it. And, do whatever uh, you want with it. That was fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was, I got two it was, slinkies and a slim. It shape. had a <laughs> yeah. Again, it was, I hate to use the word smart, but it was yeah. is so dry and weird and clever. I don't know whatever words people use for it. And you guys obviously didn't have a big budget. Was sort of part of the charm. Just the yeah. sets. Well, and the like way you, you said earlier, uh, comedy uh, money often is the gets enemy. Hurt. Of yeah, yeah, often you know uh, hurts the comic idea. You know that's in there. Well, Dana, you have to say, and I think David did audition for SNL. We'll go through that briefly. I don't know how. Just give us the sort of. Is it a points. sore subject, yeah. David? I can't, David? No, I, not I doubt at all. It's I didn't, a sore I, subject. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't do the traditional, um, the traditional audition where you come in and you do some characters and you do all that and uh, you know right. on the floor, but the comedy group I had in Boston had really started to uh, make a name for itself. And, and there was a little buzz and people all of a sudden in New York were aware of it. And, you know, it, it had a lot of people that went on to great success uh, um, across the board. As I said, Lauren Dombrowski was a producer, head writer for Mad TV. Jonathan Groff was, oh, you know, Jonathan Dana at uh, uh, Conan. Oh yeah, I um, mm -hmm. uh, was a head writer for Conan. Uh, uh, John Benjamin, you know, does all the uh, that amazing voice work, and Sam mm -hmm. C. There was just a lot of folks coming out of there, and um, uh, and they we got an invite to go to to showcase for SNL. We did it at Caroline's. And, uh, I know Al Franken was there and James Downey and, uh, uh, Frank. and some, some, some other folks. Smigel? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Smigel no, was Smigel there. Would Jim, go there. Yeah. Jim Downey mm -hmm. and, uh, Franken. And then some, a handful, maybe, um, maybe, uh, Lauren Michaels, far, <laughs> the Farley era. No, um, uh, I don't when, know. There were a handful of people that? who came down. 94 uh, would have been no like 92 maybe oh, okay maybe Something we'll trade like him maybe. for spade <laughs> uh and we did the show and it was a fucking disaster and it, we started <laughs> like 40 minutes late <laughs> i i somebody came in i can't remember who it was and you know they wanted to do time and they did a bunch of time with some bigger person and um, oh, no. and we started really late no. and then it just, yeah, yeah, oh, really late. And it, terrible. and it was a disaster. Someone and, bumps you on your phone. And there were some people in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we had a showcase. It wasn't like five minutes. We were doing like a show that had a beginning, middle and an end and it had ah. tech to it. And it's, it started like at least an hour late by the time we eventually went on. And then, um, and then there were a couple of people in the group that were just pushing too hard. Like you could tell they Nerves. weren't being naturally as funny as they were bits we've done a million times and they were just yeah. pushing too hard. It didn't work. And Super Bowl. And I think Frank and left is fine. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> grumbling all the way out. And, uh, and then Adam but I, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did get an open invitation to write for SNL to come on and write. And then I, uh, about a year or two later, I met with Lauren. And I'll do that impression for you very quickly. Uh, Excellent. I, I think Julia mm -hmm. Sweeney had uh, Rob Cohen, if you know the writer-director Rob Cohen. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Rob and I were brought uh to new york to meet to be a writer with an eye towards women it's the female cast all right whatever so rob had his interview i went in and everybody all our friends are as you know because we had tons of mutual friends we knew a lot of people at snl at that time and uh they were all excited for us and i went in and i met for about 
I want to say like 40 plus minutes with Lauren in his office. And here's my impression of how that conversation went. In a nutshell, I'll be Lauren. One of you be me. I'll ask you a question. Just start to answer it. So, David, what, what, is, what is your idea? What do you like best about sketch comedy? Well, it's, you know, it's... Because I'll uh, tell you what I like. I like it when, and it was that, (laughs) for 40 minutes, I barely, I would answer, I'd start to answer, and then he would answer his own question. And then I left, and I had no idea if it was good or bad, and everybody was like, wow, you were in there for a long time. Holy, you guys, this is going to be great. I think you know, I was like, I don't know. I have no idea. And then I, neither Rob nor I were hired. And that was that. Not a bad story, not a bad experience, no. but just weird, kind of bizarre. Um, there's so many people have uh, weird stories around that. Now it's so uh, mythic to be in a room with Lorne Michaels. I mean, that was 92, but like he is, I don't know what you call it, iconic now <laughs> with the Godfather, whatever. Oh, yeah. I, well, I, I can't imagine people going in there now. Um, but um I talked to him last night. You know, the one that really got away uh, was um, <laughs> David Cross. It was that thing of like, I answered every question. I didn't know. I had a little toot right before he came a in. A little and toot. I was sort of amped up. <laughs> uh, but, he, but he's like, like really, really good. Sorry. I, That's all I got for It you. does check out because so, they were saying right for women like to us. And it was sort of a problem then. And they've, I think they fixed it. There's so many great women on there. But... At the at that time exact time, it was a lot of like uh, it was so dude heavy. Yeah, I there. think this would have been about ninety. I want to say ninety four. Yeah, maybe? that's exactly somewhere around yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I I don't know. It seems like it's dodging a bullet in some ways. It's you did fine. Well, you know, I, then do, if you, I don't know. I, go ahead. I went to visit. I know when um, Sarah Silverman and Dave Attell were were writing there, and I was in New York for doing something. And I went to visit them. I might have had a friend who was uh, the guest that week. I, I don't remember, but I was in town. And I went to go visit them. And I remember uh, kind of walking in past some like a, a, a receptionist type of desk, like assistant mm-hmm. desk or whatever. And then there was this big room with a glass uh, thing and a long, big, long table. And the writers went there, and I went in. Oh, and there's tons of, like, pizza and Chinese food, like, Ugh, delivery. Yeah, and then um, I remember walking in <laughs> and uh, and seeing everybody, and everybody kind of felt like they had 50-pound weights on their, like, their necks. They were just slumped mm-hmm. over, and there was no energy and no joy. And I remember, and I had been coming from uh, Mr. Show at this point, where we just had a blast most of the time. I was like, oh, boy. You walk in, hello, my baby, hello, my baby. <laughs> We're sitting there in those fluorescent <laughs> lights. Bzz, 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 it's bzz. funny. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hello, I'm on. from the 22nd century. How are you? <laughs> you guys like 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> I'm from the 23rd century. <laughs> well, you know more than I do. <laughs> hey, I just did a Mr. Show yeah. kind of template of what made me laugh so hard. Bob Odekirk can you um, have this sort of Lennon and McCartney thing, or friends, and I, I, I don't know. It just seems you have a well, sensibility, uh, shared sensibility in so many ways. Yeah. We do. Just, we're we're we, it really works so phenomenally well. We're we're quite different people and with different backgrounds and. Um, and approach comedy from different ways. But when we do it together, it's just, and we knew this from the very, very, very beginning. First thing we ever started doing. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it was like effortless and it all made sense. And the, the strengths and weaknesses I have balanced out his strengths and weaknesses, which were different. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it's, it's been a, a highlight of my life, you know, to, to be able to work with him and, you know, call him my best friend. And, um, and, Oh, Oh, is that my daughter? There's there's a cat. There's a, a, she's pretending to be a cat. Marlo. Marlo. Are you out there? Well, 
Where are you? <laughs> oh, you're Daddy. at the door. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's my door <laughs> thing. on the roof. I'm in my office. <laughs> Where are you? The, the door. Talking about. Wait, what, what, what is it? All right. On the talking box. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Typical I thought I had my phone on silent. <laughs> um, your, your oh, that's box. funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Marlo. What, what was what was up with Marlo? I, I mean, I don't. I don't what was up with that? By the way, before um, we before we, anyway, I, I find that really interesting. Bob Odenkirk. Oh yeah, is the he's so fun to work with, and he's so hey. uh, he's just effusive. I don't know if he is all the time. But no, this is gonna be great. He's a great this laugher. Is, yeah. But I'll tell you this one thing, which I want to ask ask you about this is a very human bop so we know him in the 80s and he's just coming along like that and then he goes through all his stuff mr show and everything then then he's on better call saul uh so at first he's on breaking bad then he gets that show so he's on our podcast and one of my favorite moments and he goes he goes i knew if this action movie worked you guys are gonna go what the fuck <laughs> now he's a movie star yeah. It really made me laugh. Like, what is going on? Because uh, so with you and him, like I was pulled out of a movie theater once in the late 90s by people didn't know I was ever on TV. And they just said, someone told us that you knew Adam Sandler. <laughs> it's just sort of a weird, the trajectory. I, I, had, to, I had to happen this morning. And ego and stuff. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Bob, just the kind of, as he's a comedian and first and foremost, so he knew how funny it was. Uh, he just has, so anyway, how do you navigate that? Like you, your partner's in crime. Now he's going off on this thing. You're still talking all the time. It doesn't affect anything, but with you two personally, right? Well, I mean, the, the, one of the greatest things about Bob as a person and as a uh, sketch writer, comedian, actor, artist is he has no ego. There's no real ego, you know, and no. we zero. <laughs> yeah. And we He's hard to hate. And I don't trying. have that ego. <laughs> I don't have that ego either. And, and it really helps to collaborate that way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I want for him and wish for him nothing but the best and uh, all the success, success in the world and, and him with me, vice versa. And he's a big, supporter he's at every show i do if i'm in la or chicago he's there and um and he you know uh we enjoy the whole process so uh i think it and i also knew early on uh because he demonstrated it in certain sketches he's a really good dramatic actor i knew that mm -hmm. was there and it's always bothered mm -hmm. me when when people kind of make an assumption it's just lazy that oh it's a w w usually it's like wow i had no idea robin williams could really act or oh jim carrey really surprised me or <laughs> you know when an, a comic is does shows anything humanity captain kangaroo has <laughs> some chops <laughs> you know i mean it's 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 just lazy thinking and so people are like wow bob odenkirk who knew like yeah. well all of us who knew him yeah <laughs> you know it's the same thing like, well, a writer, well, he's just a writer. Well, a writer can't perform. Or direct. That's yeah. insane. They're just a writer. But yeah, the Bob who uh, of 2023, when we saw him, yeah, there's literally no ego and no change of anything. <laughs> it's yeah. like I, yeah. you could not talk to him for a decade, and it's exactly just right there. And so- you guys share that, and I guess that's why it's, it's fun. That's why you friendship. get along. I mean, he did say uh, on uh, when he got his star walk of fame that you were funnier than him. I was, yeah. <laughs> he, he said, he said, I'm funny too. I it wasn't a false compliment, but yeah, David's a little bit funnier than me in that moment. Uh, in that I, moment, yeah. There's <laughs> if you watch it, which I I didn't. I was there doing it, but uh, when I gave my little thing, um, in which I think uh, I referenced you, David Spade. And uh, I not, saw that. I watched and, it. <laughs> and then you can watch watch Bob leaning over my shoulder at the script, and you could just imagine him like punching it up in his head and making <laughs> notes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe t cut that out and maybe focus on this or you know. Well, the idea. I mean, the initial broad based idea was you started t reading an article from. From Hollywood Reporter or something that had nothing to do. With oh, Bob it was the Variety. Uh, <laughs> yeah, variety. It was um, oh, some guy. What's that fucking guy's name? The DJ, DJ Khaled, 
and mm-hmm. you know who's everywhere and like what what have you done okay and uh <laughs> so it was all it was an issue dedicated to dj Khaled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was on everybody's true. chair the reason that i did it was it, oh, they put okay. it on everybody's chair there nothing okay. to do with anything and you want to hear a great this is this is great this is so present day hollywood um So we were on Vine, right? We, you know, his his star is on uh, on Vine, just north of uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and um, and we were all set there on the side, like kind of facing mm-hmm. uh, the sidewalk, up up mm-hmm. uh, up abutting the sidewalk, and you know, there's Hollywood royalty, there's Carol Burnett, and there's you know all of these people and dressed up. And at the top, and, and it's on an incline, right? Mm. And we were uh, about halfway down. Uh, and then, it, and it's disgusting, right? There's the smell of human <laughs> pee, and it's, it's hot, and it's just a disgusting, awful place. And I don't know what, where it came from or what business was releasing it or whatever, but this gush, the stream, that's, I'm going to say, a good inch and a half to two inches thick of water. <laughs> And people have open toed, like the women have open toed mm-hmm. high heels. Just come, and it's brown and dirty and oily <laughs> and everything that's Hollywood. Yeah. And it just comes <laughs> rushing down. And so while this celebration of Hollywood is happening, people are like, oh God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and it was just a perfect little. If it was on Mr. Show, it would have gotten higher <laughs> and more covering people's yeah. heads, right? It would have been just like... And then they would have ignored it, and they would just be like, I don't know, just kept going on. nothing's wrong. It is like... <laughs> well, when there's fame going Lord. on, you're willing to... I, I'm willing to look the other way. I just get so focused on the fame of it all and the fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. I'm like, but I'm here. It's a blast. My star is down near El Segundo, if you know where that is. Uh, it's by a El Pollo Loco uh, that's not on oh, the map. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything left for Dana Cross, Danny? Uh, David Cross? <laughs> David, Dana? <laughs> well, unless he comes back another time, I would. Yeah, I, I, well, I have too so much. many things. No, I mean, too many. We didn't well, touch we can, arrested, uh, arrested Development. We didn't, sure. we didn't touch uh, Minion, Megamind. We didn't touch. Um, uh, what, what's what's up with Jason Bateman? I mean, what's what's the deal with that? What's guy? Yeah, his what deal? Trash what's Will Arnett. Deal? Deal. Don't pull, don't pull <laughs> any punches. What's the deal? Will Arnett. I love those also, guys. I love those guys. Not no, no. Yeah, yeah want sorry, you they're the them. people you want to see in a restaurant, and they wave you over to their yeah. booth. Oh, ba- Bateman's a a pro. I mean, he. So, so many of the, of the people I know that are the most down to earth, most equitable, gracious, uh, gracious and, and, and caring people in the world of Hollywood, uh, were kid actors or born and raised in LA. Like the assholes, when people think about asshole Hollywood, (laughs) those are all people who moved there. But the people I know Mm -hmm. that were born and raised into it with kid actors are just super sweet, nice, genuine, good people, and Jason's one of those. I do think the longer you're in it, you don't you don't get tricked out by it much. So yeah. I assume if you start as a kid, you see this kid got the Lassie show, and I did all all the emotionally violent aspect but to you it. Also, starts you, to kind of tamp down. You see the yeah. the you know the sausage being made, as it were, and it, and there's yeah. you know for a fact it's not as exciting and glamorous and. It's a job. People seem to forget that, but it's a fucking job, you know? Yeah. I mean, my wife was a, a child actress, you know, and she has a, a lot to say about it, you know? There's a really yeah, good movie t- about that, it Dana, too serious. if you get a chance. It's called Dickie Roberts. Uh, um, Oppenheimer? Anyway, <laughs> um, by the way, Jessica Walters <laughs> played my... She was in a movie called PCU, one of the first movies I ever did, so... I would follow her and things she did. So it was fun. Um, she was kind of fun on that movie. She was mm-hmm. pretty sweet to me. Uh, and the cast is huge. Uh, everyone loves, everyone loves rest of development. And then it got another life on Netflix, right? Is that right? Yeah. 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 Good job. Did that. I just was curious cause I was looking at that. Did that predate the American version of the office or is there any, um, like were you, 
uh, arrested, in America. I think arrested predated the American office, but not by much. It couldn't have been by much, but because I know the, I I don't know, but I think it did. But it yeah, couldn't I have mean, been they're by different, too long. But there's a certain uh, arrest. I don't know what. Well, you, the the cinema the, verite. But, yeah, the documentary yeah. style thing. Mm-hmm. Although we never uh, the the camera the characters never acknowledged the camera the mm-hmm. or the quote crew uh, right. right, which they did in the office. Uh, I mean, they went to the well on that thing like 20 times an episode. Somebody looking over going, that's a great way out of a joke. Steve Carell. Steve Carell, what's up with that guy? Oh, you tell me. I don't know. I just think you can say that about anybody. (laughs) David Cross, what's up with that guy? It's it's a good way to sound. Another very talented comic uh, who's an extremely talented actor. Steve Carell, Clicked you never boxes. would have thought, never yeah. in a million years, you'd be any good at anything. That guy's a silly <laughs> clown. Yeah. He's and a he's clown. Like, what Oscars? Give him. Yeah. No, he's a, and he's a, a, another person. Uh, sounds like we're doing Merv Griffin or something, but <laughs> it's like that's such a lovely human being yeah. and so unpretentious. Even after he was huge, he would go yeah. to the mall. His wife Nancy told me just as you know, didn't think it'd be a problem. You know, and then people were mobbing him. So I like the good ones. Let me tell you that. Well, yeah. Me too. David, thank you for spending some time with uh, the dysfunctional couple of me and Dana. That's great. I'm glad to see you guys. Uh, you know, the therapy's working out and it's, it's, you seem to be copacetic. Well, it's all working just, and- I just want a newsflash. We have a talk over meter and we were up at 60% of the time you tried to speak. We talked. Over. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's about an, good. that's about an, about an average. It's, it's right in the lot. middle. It's not, it's a, <laughs> Steve Martin was slightly higher. <laughs> anyway, but, we have to be careful of that, yeah. this new technology. One day. I'll just leave you with this. If you're watching TV with your wife and a very handsome man comes on and she goes, oh, and you, and you go, what? I don't get it. What, what are you talking about? That's what I do. That's my defense fallback. That's it. I don't know That's what your you're talking closing about. words. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt. You know, I was just doing this to try to make him smile. <laughs> didn't work this bit out. Yeah, I should. But I think it's funny. Brad Pitt comes on television. And you go. I don't get it. What? Yeah. What's the? What's the whole whoop de do? Oh, about I this see. Guy? Yeah. yeah, I see. It's so you, a you, little because reverse. you're you're th- you're threatened by the the handsomeness. You're like, yeah. I'm. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah I do I that. Have. I do that when I see Bruce Valanche. But uh, maybe it doesn't work that well. <laughs> I, that's the one I that's get. That's just for you. Look up Bruce. Yeah, Nothing that's, against that's Bruce. Just for you. But look Bruce up. Brad Pitt, Bruce <laughs> Fletch. All right. Thanks, David. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Please follow, subscribe, leave a like, a review, all the stuff. Smash that button, whatever it is, wherever you get your podcasts. Fly on the Wall is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Jenna Weiss Berman of Odyssey, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment, and Heather Santoro. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman. 